4.18. This number is the reason that you're alive right now. Under normal conditions, that's how many joules of energy you need to raise the temperature of a gram of water by 1 degree Celsius. Also known as the specific heat capacity of water, this value, this property of water, it's special. You see, if this value were any different, life as we know it would not exist. If it were higher, more energy would be needed to raise the temperature of water. The amount of water that evaporates into the atmosphere would reduce, and that means so would rainfall. This also means that there would be a greater difference between the temperature of air near land and the air near water. The resulting changes in pressure would lead to changes in the wind speed, temperatures would significantly drop, and species would slowly go extinct. On the other hand, if the heat capacity were lower than it is now, water would evaporate much quicker, and it would no longer be able to regulate the temperature of the earth as it does now. It would rain all the time, crops would die, and again, species would slowly go extinct. 4.18 it seems is just the right amount of energy. This just rightness is seen in other aspects of life on earth too, including where it sits in the solar system. Too close to the sun and the water would just boil away before it could form. Too far and it would just freeze. But all these properties are in some way, shape, or form related to water, and so it's no wonder then that the search for life anywhere in space is essentially a search for water. And we found it. Lots of it actually. You see, hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe, and oxygen is the third most abundant. In between them is helium, which doesn't really react with much, so when the conditions are appropriate, water can be formed. And it is. Given the scale of it all and how old the universe is, you'd imagine that there must be some planets in an Earth-like distance from their respective stars to allow for the formation of liquid water, and by extension, life. Dr. Frank Drake attempted to answer this very question in 1961, using the Drake Equation. He used factors like the average rate of star formation, how many of those stars could have planets, how many of those planets might develop intelligent life forms that could possibly communicate, and so on. Instead of the entire universe, Drake focused only on our galaxy, which is huge and for practical limitations of speed and time, really the only thing we should worry about anyway. Understandably, these inputs are all assumptions, and as such, the output of this equation is also an assumption. Depending on who and when you ask, the result of the Drake equation could be anything from a small number that is barely greater than zero to a number in the tens of millions. Our intuition tells us that if that number were somewhere in between that immense range, the Milky Way should be beaming with advanced civilizations making interplanetary journeys with regularity. Just our galaxy, one of the trillions out there, is so incredibly large that even with astronomically low odds, you would expect to find at least some other civilizations. To give you a sense of how large it is, modern humans have been around for nearly 200,000 years, and in that time, light, at its incredible speed, has traveled the complete width of the Milky Way. Only twice.